So here I have a power supply. It's currently set to the, the max on this one partition because I found that a higher voltage provided a, a cleaner uh, engraving. And there's no, no reason why you actually need a power supply. Um, you can use uh, batteries, any form of wall socket. A lot of the time you'll see this done with a 9 volt battery. Uh, so I'd suggest probably doing any range from that to about 40 volts for safety. Not sure what would happen if you went any higher. It might just get out of hand. Uh, so yeah, I've just got this uh, cotton swab, uh, dipped it in salt water, got the crocodile clip here. Then all you need to do is just tap it against there and it'll start engraving. One thing to be concerned about is uh, making sure your polarity is right, otherwise you'll um, be starting to deposit your crocodile clip. Mm -hmm. So I went through uh, three double-ended cotton buds and then here's what we've ended up with and then if I just peel this off and there you go nice and clean and I can't rub off because it's engraved into the steel so I've got Inkscape open here um, and the first thing is to reset the size of my page um, because my laser engraver is nowhere near this large. Its printing platform is 37 millimeters squared. And then the next thing is we need to get an image of the pic so that we know where we're printing on there. Then uh, we want to trace the bitmap. I'm going to do it with edge detection and we know exactly what's going on there. Get rid of the original image. And then we want to resize this so my pick that I'm going to be um, working with is about uh, 25 millimeters by uh, 28, and that needs to just be somewhere in the plane. And then you can add extensions into In Inkscape for laser engraving. I've added this uh, Raster 2 Laser G Code Generator. I'm just going to keep all of these default settings, apply that. Now we have an image from which the laser engraver can read. And the next thing to do is to get the image that you want to engrave on. I'm just going to do the channel name. And again, trace bitmap. Let's mess with the settings there. Okay, there we go. Let's go with that. Again, get rid of the original image, bring this to where I want it, I'll have that. Let's go with there. Uh, delete the original pick. And then, again, export that. And then we should be good to go uh, with this uh, laser GRBL software which reads the images and uh, outputs the g-code for the laser engraver. So it's this one, this is just the pick, those settings seem fine, That'll work fine. Let's create that. And then we just need to go and put a piece of uh, serial box in the laser engraver and is the laser engraver in action. It's just uh, something I made from some DVD drives and a laser, it's, uh, all Arduino controlled. Yeah, just all chucked into an Amazon box, but it works pretty well. What I found works really well with the laser engraver is uh, just regular packing tape as the coating. Now I'm just going to trim this around here and uh, very lightly glue the pick exactly over the template that we just printed and then print the logo. You can see the letter's been engraved out and just with a pair of tweezers you can just about... And then um, the next step is to actually etch it. Now you don't need to have a laser engraver necessarily to do all of this, it just allows you to make more intricate patterns.